We are facing unprecedented global challenges. Our planet is heating up, species are becoming extinct at an alarming rate, racism and other systemic inequities persist. And there are too few efforts to come together and talk about how to actually solve the problems we face. Is a just, healthy and humane world even possible? It is. By transforming a single system, we can create a world where all people, animals and nature can thrive. That system is schooling. And the transformation we need is humane education. In age-appropriate ways, humane education introduces students to the challenges we face in our world and prepares them to be solutionaries who know how to address and solve problems in ways that do the most good and least harm for people, animals, and the environment. What does humane education look like in practice? Meet Kiara. She's very excited to get to school. She and her classmates have been exploring the answer to this question. How is it possible that a fast food burger and an organic apple sometimes cost the same amount of money? She's found it both interesting and disturbing to learn about the political, economic, and food systems involved in the answer to this question, and has been researching the many factors that impact food costs, learning about the implications for human health, animal welfare, and environmental sustainability, while gaining skills in critical and systems thinking, math, and research methods. Kiara and her classmates have developed proposed legislation to address government subsidies of unhealthy, unsustainably produced foods, and they've presented their ideas to their congressional representative and senators. This is humane education. Meet Alexis. Alexis and her classmates are examining a week's worth of school trash. Their teacher has asked how each item in the trash could be avoided by making different purchasing choices, or reused, composted, or recycled. Alexis realizes that if she drinks tap water instead of bottled juice, or doesn't buy anything that is wrapped in plastic or styrofoam, she'll produce less waste. But the truth is that she really likes drinking juice and wants plenty of things that are overpackaged. As her class discusses how they can reduce their trash, Alexis says that it would be nice if containers and packaging could be composted like food waste and turned into soil. Her teacher remarks that this is a great idea and tells her that there are companies working to achieve this goal. With her teacher's help, Alexis contacts inventors to learn more, and she becomes passionate about chemistry that leads to sustainable production. This is humane education. Meet Elijah. Every week, Elijah's class visits a nearby park where they quietly observe wildlife. Today, he sees a squirrel chewing on a mushroom only a few yards away. He watches until the sound of a woodpecker distracts him, and he rolls on his back to watch the bird pound her beak into a tree to find a meal of insects. Then, a few minutes later, he notices a small screech owl sleeping in a hole in the tree. When he and his classmates return to school, they share their observations and their questions. Elijah is wondering, how can the squirrel eat a mushroom that might be poisonous to people? How does the woodpecker's brain not get scrambled from hitting the wood so hard? Why is the screech owl sleeping in the middle of the day? The children learn to answer these questions, which leads to new questions, and every outing strengthens their knowledge, heightens their curiosity, and deepens their appreciation for the natural world. Elijah and his classmates are also learning how to make choices that help protect the park and the animals who reside there. This is humane education. Meet Ramon. He's passionate about racial justice. At the end of his junior year, Ramon learned in social studies class that the U.S. incarceration rate is the highest in the world, with U.S. jails housing more than 20% of the world's prisoners, who are disproportionately low-income people of color. With his teacher's support, he began researching the school-to-prison pipeline, restorative justice, and ways the discipline policies in his own school might unfairly penalize certain students. With a group of classmates, he proposed a new disciplinary policy for his school based on the restorative justice practices he studied, which the school then adopted. This is humane education. To solve the challenges we face, we need caring, 
motivated students who've had the opportunity to solve real-world problems. Where will such young people come from? From schools that are committed to educating a generation of solutionaries. To learn more about humane education and the solutionary framework, visit humaneeducation.org.